Greetings YouTube, greetings baseball card collectors, greeting collectors of uh, vintage baseball. There's a whole bunch of people out there who collect all kinds of vintage items, vintage baseball cards, vintage uh, game used memorabilia, vintage well, just in case you don't know what vintage means, it usually stands for something that's really old and occasionally it has a little value associated with it. There's collectors of, uh, like I said, vintage uh, game used memorabilia, uh, baseballs, baseball bats, gloves even. And there's collectors of uh, vintage f photographs, uh, documents of uh, any kind of uh, from any kind of baseball team. What we have here is an example of two such vintage photographs. Now, some of you may not be aware, and I hate mentioning this on video because as soon as I mention something on video, the scammers watch my videos too, and they sometimes get ideas from these videos. But I have to do this in order to tell you what's going on. Scammers like buying these vintage photographs. And now, don't forget, scammers buy cheap junk. They try to lie and mislead you into thinking it's something that it's not. Scammers don't sell, like I keep warning you, scammers don't sell legitimate logo patches, period. They don't waste their money buying the legitimate patches. They buy the plain Jane jerseys. They buy imported uh, the plain Jane jersey cards. And then they buy the imported jerseys with the bogus logos on there, the replicas. And then they just swap out the regular plain Jane sport cards and etc. Um, like a lot of people who sell, uh, like people are all over eBay selling Babe Ruth signed baseballs and pictures and all this other stuff. Well, it's clearly evident if you examine the baseball, if you examine the photograph, that, or like there's people who sell Babe Ruth photographs signed in Sharpie with a Sharpie marker. Now, I don't know if you, you know, know how to buy a vowel, but during Babe, Babe Ruth wasn't alive when uh, sharp, Sharpie markers existed. So if you see a Babe Ruth autograph signed with a Sharpie marker, it's obviously fake. But I'm going to try to explain here. These, you know, they signed the fake pictures, the fake um, balls, and, you know, the jerseys. I mean, this is a common thing that's going on in our hobby today. Now, the, one of the scams is they get a vintage photograph, like you see here, there's two examples of two vintage photographs. It's a particular Detroit Tiger. Now, anybody knows one of the great, all-time greats was a Detroit Tiger, Ty Cobb. So what the scammers do, and this is how you know somebody is a scammer. Please try to look at these pictures closely here. Like I said, these are two vintage photographs of a Detroit Tiger, and the scammers like telling you what, like I told you, they mislead you. They try to tell you a lie, and they hope you believe it. The scammers want you to think that this is, like, in these two examples here, you have a fake Ty Cobb autograph here, and they actually dated it to make it look legitimate. And you have another Ty Cobb autograph here that's personalized. Now, what some of you may not know is, and what the scammers like to do is, they buy these vintage pictures, and what I'm trying to say is, the pictures are of uh, Detroit Tigers that are not Ty Cobb. See, this picture is not a picture of Ty Cobb. The scammers want you to believe it is. Because you can't really, you know, see his face too clearly. But the scammers tell you, hey, this is a Ty Cobb. And then, you know, you could actually buy these pictures for sale from dealers without the, you know, fake autograph on there. They say, oh, this is a vintage Ty Cobb photograph. Now, many times the photographs are reproductions. So that's how you know that the autograph is fake. Because the photo was made after his death. 
But, you know, that's not the point here. This is not a picture of Ty Cobb. This is a picture of Detroit Tiger player by the name of Hack Simons. And, th you know, th this picture as well. This is Hack Simons. This is not Ty Cobb, not Ty Cobb. Many vintage photographs from Detroit Tigers players, they always try to tell you, hey, this is Ty Cobb. When it's not, that's what scammers like to do. I don't know how many times I gotta repeat myself. I have to tell you people over and over, and I'm asking you, please, do take this material I'm giving you here, make the video better than I can do it, okay? We have to get the word out. People are buying these, you know, like I said, you could buy this picture without the fake autograph, it's not Ty Cobb, okay, period. But the scammers want you to think it is. So they're either going to sell you the picture with just a plain picture, telling you it's Ty Cobb when it's not, or they're going to put a fake autograph on there and really try to rip you off. And now, what does the title of the video say? Well, let's go <laughs> check out hallsofshame.com, H A U. L S O F S H A M E dot com. If you look on the breaking news recently, the first line here PSA and JSA hacks can't tell Ty Cobb from Hack Simons or Simmons, excuse me. It's just that I'm getting tired of saying this stuff over and over again. This is not new information, okay? If you read this article, the link will be below the video. And if I remember, I'll put the, the link on the video. Um, okay, now somebody actually told me this a long time ago, years ago, Ty Cobb collector, when I was telling them my story that I bought a whole bunch of fake Babe Roots and Joe DiMaggio stuff. And he told me, yeah, I bought some fake Ty Cobb stuff. Now, now the problem is these Ty Cobb fakes are popping up everywhere, these pictures. They're showing up all over the place. In the last year and a half, there's been one of popping up every month and a half. And then all the Ty Cobb autographs are virtually identical, which means this it's the same scammer signing all of them. So um, and like I now if you read here, it says right here, last summer, autographnewslive.com pointed out that PSA had apparently authenticated a Ty Cobb autograph on what was purported to have been a photograph of the Georgia Peach, which is referring to Ty Cobb, but was actually a classic Charles Conlon image. That's the photographer. Okay, they know the name of the photographer who took the picture. That's how they know who the player is. Charles, it's a classic Charles Conlon image of Cobb's teammate, Hack Simmons, in 1910 is when the picture was taken. Okay, they already know. It's already been proven for years now that this is not Ty Cobb. Okay? Now, what we have going on here is PSA, the authenticator, authenticates these pictures as being genuine when they're not. Because it's not even Ty Cobb in the picture. And also, of course, JSA authenticates them because they authenticate everything because they're complete criminals. I don't know how many more times i got to explain that. Go look at the list of everybody who authenticates for them. Now, what's interesting here is, and which it is also not mentioned in this article, is what they do mention, like they say here... Is this alleged cop signature real? PSA and John Reznikov think so. But why is it signed on a Conlon photo of Hack Simmons? Is the question. And like it, and they're mentioning John Reznikov, because Reznikov has an auction site and he sell, you know, he has or excuse me, he has his own business. He's his, you know, an authenticator on his own, but what that's not mentioned here is he's also an authenticator for Jimmy Spence, JSA. He's on their website. You can go check it out yourself. He's an authenticator for him. 
Now, what I've been telling people for years, you know, John Resnikoff runs a, 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 a scam outfit called University Archives, you know, a legitimate sounding name. Just like Federal Express, Federal Express has nothing to do with the government. The Federal Reserve Bank has nothing to do with the government. Those are all private institutions. You could open up a federal bakery if you wanted. If, you know, it has nothing to do with the government. Now, John Resnikoff, he is an employee of JSA. He is one of their authenticators. He is also a proven scammer. He is a repeat scammer. I've been telling you for years, over and over, every, most of the stuff he sells on his website is bogus. Now, he sells these Ty Cobb signed pictures very often. He has one for sale right now. He does this over and over and over again. Please check out this article. Okay? Now, don't forget, recently I also made another video about Ty Cobb when PSA DNA authenticated a laser printed Ty Cobb autograph. Okay? It was printed on the with the laser printer. It was a fake picture with the fake autograph and both PSA DNA and JSA authenticated the autograph. It wasn't even, a, it was like I said, it was a laser printed autograph. It wasn't legitimate ink autograph on a, it wasn't even a legit picture. It was a, it was a bogus picture printed with a laser printer, which didn't exist when Ty Cobb was alive. Why? I don't know. Please, somebody, explain this to me. I want to know why more of you people don't know how to buy a vowel. You can't figure this stuff out. Why do so many people think that Spence is legitimate? Why? John Resnikoff, for years, has been selling this fake garbage. Okay, now, somebody, either Resnikoff himself, or, or like, I'm going to even help the FBI out, anybody who's investigating this. The, uh, the guy who is signing these, I personally believe, works for Spence, if it's not Spence himself. Okay, because Spence, you know, he doesn't have too many working brain cells as it is. So, like, you know, the guy who ripped me off, Herman Darvik, who also works for JSA, you know, he is a really good counterfeiter. So, who knows, maybe Darvik is signing all of these Thai cops, which are appearing all over the place. Now, every single Thai Cobb expert out there, besides the ones that work at JSA and PSA, every single one of them says that this Thai Cobb autograph is not legitimate, that both of these Thai Cobbs are not legitimate. And I mean, if you just examine this one carefully here, you could tell it's not legitimate. I mean, it's clearly not legitimate. And this one is, you know, every single Thai Cobb expert out there is legitimate. And like, they tell you these are not legitimate Ty Cobb autographs. And not only that, like I keep telling you, this is not even a picture of Ty Cobb. And John Resnikoff is actually selling one now on his website at University Archives, and he wants $3,600 for it. A fake autograph on a fake picture. The scammers want you to believe, like John Resnikoff, like the people at Spence, like the people at PSA, they want you to think that this is a picture of Ty Cobb. John Resnikov, call him up, ask him, is this a picture of Ty Cobb? He'll tell you yes. That's how you know he's a scammer. Do you, if you need, I have an extra pair of speakers, computer speakers, a really good expensive pair of computer speakers, an extra set. I have no use for them. If you want them, you could have them. If you can't hear what I am saying, that JSA is a complete fraud. Everybody who works there is a complete fraud. John Resnikoff, I've been saying for years, is a complete fraud. University Archives is a criminal operation. Almost everything they sell is bogus. It always has been. It has proven to be bogus. It has been proven to be bogus. I'm saying that again if you didn't hear it the first time. These are not Ty Cobb signed pictures. Period. 
that is Hack Simmons. And then we have the fake Ty Cobb balls that have been authenticated by JSA and PSA. Why are you sending your stuff by, to criminals to get authenticated? Why are you sending your stuff to get graded when I've already showed you that they are grading counterfeit cards? Worthless pieces of paper, they're giving them value. PSA had, I lost all respect for PSA because they signed a contract with the top counterfeiter in the country who makes most of these counterfeit cards himself and he just sends the cards directly after he prints them to PSA to get graded. And now Beckett is using JSA to authenticate their autographs. Why? Call them up. Say, why is JSA authenticating your autographs when they can't tell a real tight cop from a fake one? When they can't distinguish between a laser printed tight cop autograph from a genuine hand signed tight cop autograph? Not only that, like I said, these tight cop pictures are popping up every few months. And the signature is identical on each one, which tells you one thing. The same person is making all of them. They know who the counterfeiter is. They know. And like I, like I said, I have my own suspicions. It's somebody who actually works for JSA, and it could be Herman Darvick himself. Because this is the same kind of garbage he likes to scam people with. And he's been scamming people for more than 20 years already. Recently, Legendary Auctions has been selling these fake counterfeits. Now, if you remember, I did a video about Legendary Auctions, who they are. Those are the people from Mastro auctions that got shut down for scamming and now Mastro just recently was arrested again for the second or third time for selling fake and bogus garbage. And people still are buying from legendary auctions. Le legendary auctions is still selling these fake Thai cobs. Here's a fake Thai Cobb, which there's actually several of these available. You can tell um, they're, you know, they're signed by the same person because all the autographs look identical. And plus this particular scammer put Thai Cobb and then put his whole name, Tyrus R. Cobb, on the same ball. Now, how do you know these are fake, even though the autographs do look pretty sweet? This baseball was manufactured after Thai Cobb died. So this can't be legitimate. But tell that, don't ask JSA, ask PSA, how could they authenticate these baseballs when they know it was manufactured after the fact, when they are getting them in the mail from the scammer himself or herself, whoever's doing the signing sends them in. They know who sent it in. How come we never hear who these people are? Because it's the same person usually every single time. Like I said, the guy who did these, he did several of them. Several of them have been uh, authenticated by both PSA and JSA. And auction shops sell them all the time. Even though, like I said, the ball was manufactured after Ty Cobb died. Now, this is a very long article. Please check it out. Here's another example of a bogus Ty Cobb autograph, which was authenticated by JSA. Here's another bogus Ty Cobb, which was authenticated by both PSA and JSA. And then another one that was authenticated by PSA and JSA. How can any, when any authenticator gets this in the mail, how can they say how, how you know how can they say this is a legitimate Ty Cobb autograph when it's not even a picture of Ty Cobb? Just 
Scammers lie, they cheat, they steal, they mislead. Virtually every name on the JSA Authenticator website there, all their authenticators are criminals. Just like John Resnikov, University Archives, check out their bogus garbage they sell there. You will see that most of the stuff they sell is worthless garbage. And ask them, how can you think this is Ty Cobb when it's not? This is a typical scammer scam. That's why it's called a scam. Because they have to lie, they have to mislead. They take a picture of any vintage Detroit Tiger and automatically it's Ty Cobb because those are the ones with the most value. So hey, look at this picture of Ty Cobb, it's wonderful. It's not Ty Cobb! Turn up your speakers, clean the wax out of your ears, please. 